All right, not gonna lie, this video is a hot mess. It was supposed to be an unboxing, but I lost the footage of actually unboxing it and taking it off the roller and all that. So this is actually like partly unboxing and partly going to be um, testing out the paints and testing out gesso as well. So just bear with me. If it's kind of painful I'm sorry um, so I did put the numbers onto the paints and then I talked about how great these little trays are these little trays I have reused them from the first painting that I got and if my paints come in a strip or just sitting loose in a bag I cut them up and I put them in this old tray because these trays are great for keeping everything organized they actually grip onto the paints so the only thing with these is that you have to put the number on before you start taking the paints off because then they're not the pots aren't numbered otherwise at all so if you lose a pot you will never be able to put it back in the same spot unless you've swatched already um, so just make sure that the pots have numbers on them before you take them out of the trays but the trays are awesome okay so let's have a look at this canvas. The image is a similar image to the Spell Queen canvas that I did and I will link that video. The Spell Queen canvas that I did was a diamond painting. I'm not sure if you can see, no I don't think you can see it better on there. Again with paint by numbers you really have to look at the image from the website which I will put on the screen. But let me show you what I love about this one. Okay first of all it's cats and I love cats but look at this look at their little salt and pepper shaker oh my god that's so adorable little kitty cat salt and pepper shakers that the little kitty cats have in their little kitty cat house their little kitty cat bakery i love it i love it now i want to get up close and personal with this canvas and with the guide sheet so this canvas has um, a lot of color blocking so you'll see like in behind in behind up here the cat's faces and their bodies have a lot of color blocking and even in the areas of confetti the confetti is um, a decent size so these are going to this is going to go pretty well and pretty fast you know if you look at these bits of confetti they're quite manageable there are a few places where there is very tiny sections or there are very tiny tiny sections and this right here is the worst of it okay and what i want to tell you is do not let stuff like this get you discouraged all right if you take number 21 and you don't even bother putting the number six stripe on there you're going to be just fine nobody's going to notice it's totally up to you whether you want to paint in that number six or that little number 14 and let me show you something else number 21 which is the main stripe there's the color number six which is the tiny decorative bit there's the color all right so who is going to notice if you didn't put that dinky tiny little piece of number six in beside the 21 nobody's gonna notice all right so what I mean there's some tricks if you want to paint everything super accurately and you want to get that number six sure there there's a tiny paintbrush there's ways you can do it but what I want to say here and what I want to get across is don't let this stress you out Right now what's stressing me out is the noise that's coming from outside. I think my husband is doing leaf blowing or something. <laughs> so I apologize if you can hear that. Um, but anyways, do not let this stress you out. Don't let this turn you off trying paint by number, all right? This is your canvas. You paid for this picture. You paid for these paints. You can do whatever you want with them. If you want to color that, in with your toothpaste from upstairs you can do that too all right so this is your painting I want you to feel confident that you can alter it however you want and you don't need to be um, captive to basically every little thing that's wrong with the canvas 
the other thing that I want to show you is, okay, so here's the clarity of the numbers on the canvas. Even on that two, super tiny spot, we could read it. Here's the clarity of the guide sheet. I don't know why guide sheets are so horrible. They are not guides, <laughs> really. I they, All of the ones that I've gotten have been like that. All of them, even from the more expensive stores. So what I have been doing lately is taking pictures as I go along. So let's say I'm gonna work on this teapot. I'll take a picture, I'll just exactly like this, snap a picture, keep it up on my phone while I work on that. And then you can zoom into the picture and find the tiny little number 21 that you're looking to paint. And then when you work on the next section, take another picture. For this particular canvas, I don't think that I'm going to need that very much because it is, um, you know, the spaces are all pretty big. So I don't think I'll have a problem. But let's move into doing some swatching. All right. And the reason that I am doing two X's, if you haven't watched my videos recently, is I'm gonna try one of the X's with a layer of gesso on it, just to see if the gesso helps with coverage of the paints that aren't so great. So let me just get that ready. So I'm using, let me just shake it up. I'm using Liquitex uh, Clear Gesso and I've been trying this lately because lots of people, I mean, gesso is ubiquitous. People, artists use it all the time for canvas prep um, for various reasons. Um, but I've been trying to see if it's worth me using it on canvases that are already pre-treated like this one. Um, so this one is the raw canvas on one side, and then this is kind of, a white sort of slick canvas um, and I want to see I want to try this on different types of canvases and see where it helps and where it doesn't help as much okay so this is very interesting and this is why it's always good to repeat experiments because this time with this particular canvas and these particular uh, paints, the gesso has made a difference. So look at number two. There is much better coverage with the gesso than there isn't. Same with like all three of these colors here. Much better coverage with the gesso. It helped a little tiny bit with this number one, but not enough to make make a huge difference but like these three that's a big difference even this dark gray color you can see the x peeking out in the non gesso and then in the gesso it's completely covered so we see it again in a lot of these colors now the ones that are still pretty um translucent it's not helping so for example like number 17, seven, nine, these, it's not making much of a difference. And I think it seems to be the colors that are very transparent, the gesso isn't helping. But the ones that are just teetering on the edge, it's really helping. Like 20, 21, 22, 24, the, it's made a big difference with these ones. And I think what is happening here is because the gesso is a little bit gritty, it's grabbing onto the paint. And for these colors here, where that's making the difference on this super, super slick canvas, um, it is grabbing onto the paint where it's just sliding over without. So very interesting. I'm, I'm gonna grab the other canvas that we did the experiment on and we'll just have a look and compare all right so um, now with this canvas up here I ended up doing several coats but um, 
and this one is only one coat so it's not the perfect comparison but if we look at the difference between these paints maybe we should look at the original swatches um, with these ones they are very very transparent paints so these would be kind of on par with like the number one or the number seven where they're very transparent and the the gesso did not make a difference on these guys it didn't make a difference on these super transparent ones so the ones that were a little bit more like i would expect it have to have made a difference in like number 13 or 14. now i didn't really see it so much on this canvas when we did the experiment um this also here's some other differences the texture of the canvas so this one is very coated very shiny um, if you look at the coating on the canvas it's quite shiny it's almost like a layer of paint whereas this one is slightly more fabricy. so that might be part of the difference this one the gesso is making up for the fact that it's so shiny and slippery whereas here it had something to grab onto the paint did so there are there's definitely a place for gesso in the repertoire so this canvas here when i go to do it um, i am going to definitely gesso the canvas whereas when i did this one there wouldn't have been a, a point in gessoing so i think that this swatching is a good idea and probably swatching with the gesso experiment is a good idea for canvases when i get them until i sort of get used to which ones require the gesso and which ones don't so very interesting all right so this video was a little bit of a mess what was it was it an unboxing was it a test of gesso what was it i don't know but anyways uh stay tuned for more unboxings that are more unboxing like and also for more talk about gesso and we will see you in the next video all right bye, -bye.